Hey everyone, and welcome to ChemTalk. In this video, we will be going over how to do unit conversions using stoichiometry. We will also be focusing on using the mole and how to use molar mass in calculations. Stoichiometry is the use of math in chemistry. Using stoichiometry, we are able to convert between many different units, including moles, atoms, grams, and liters. In order to do these conversions, all we have to do is set up the equation and make sure our units cancel out correctly. An example of this from life is using coins. In this example, we have 25 pennies, but we don't know what it converts to in terms of quarters. But we do know the conversion to nickels, so we'll start with that. Say for every 5 pennies, we have 1 nickel. We make sure the units are canceling on both sides of the line, pennies on the top left, and now pennies on the bottom. So now we know for every five nickels, we have one quarter. We add in this conversion rate, putting the nickels on the bottom to cancel out with the nickels that we have on the top. We are now able to cancel out the units that we do have, pennies for pennies and nickel for nickel, leaving us with the unit that we wanted, the quarter. We now multiply the numbers on the top row, 25 times one and one, which gets 25, and five times five on the bottom, and this 25 over 25. 25 divided by 25 is one, which leaves us with one quarter. As we know, 25 pennies is equal to one quarter. This is the general idea of stoichiometry and chemistry. We exchange units using conversion rates until we reach our desired answer. In order to use stoichiometry effectively, we need to learn the most important and common conversion tools. In chemistry, we often refer to th amounts of things in moles or moles spelled with or without an E. This is because samples in chemistry contain a large amount of atoms or molecules in every sample. Additionally, this allows for ease of conversions between units. For convenience, we use the unit of a mole. A singular mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. We often refer to things as a mole of atoms, a mole of elements, or a mole of a molecule. When we say there are one mole of chlorine, it means there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of chlorine. Similarly, when there are two moles of nitrogen, there are 12.04 times 10 to the 23rd nitrogen atoms. As an example of this, we have the question, how many fluorine atoms are in three moles of fluorine? We start off with the three moles of fluorine. And from the previous slide, we know there's a conversion rate of one mole of any element to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. If we do the same stoichiometry setup, canceling out the units, multiplying, and dividing across, we'll get 1.81 times 10 to the 24th atoms of fluorine. Another stoichiometric tool we have is molar mass. On the periodic table, usually below the symbol for each element, is the molar mass. The molar mass refers to the mass of one mole of that element. The picture to the right shows a zoomed in picture of the carbon on the periodic table. The number below the C is the molar mass of carbon, around 12 grams per mole of carbon. This exists for every element on the periodic table. For example, one mole of hydrogen weighs roughly one gram. When looking at zinc, the atomic mass is 65.4 grams per mole. For every mole of zinc, there are about 65.4 grams of zinc atoms. We can use the molar mass to convert between grams and moles. Furthermore, we can use moles to convert between particles such as atoms, molecules, or ions. 
This is a common question that will come across when dealing with molar mass. How many grams are in this amount of moles? In the first example, we're given two moles of oxygen. From the periodic table, we know that one mole of oxygen is equal to about 16 grams of oxygen atoms. We correctly line up the units for our conversions, multiply across and divide, and we find that two moles of oxygen is about equal to 32 grams of oxygen atoms. We can do a similar problem with an entire molecule, as long as we know the molar mass of its parts. We can add them together and get the molar mass of the entire molecule. So for water, or H2O, H2O, it has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Hydrogen has a mol molar mass of 1, and oxygen has a molar mass of 16. Adding the 16 plus 2, 1 for each hydrogen atom, equals 18 grams per mole of water. Using the same stoichiometric conversion, we can find that 5 moles of water equals 90 grams of H2O. In this final example, we combine both the use of moles and molar mass together. The problem states, how many atoms is in 12 grams of lithium? So let's remember the different tools we have. We have the molar mass of lithium, which is 6.941 grams per mole, which we get from the periodic table. Additionally, we know the amount of atoms in a single mole, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. We keep the same process as previous problems. We line up our conversion rates, making sure our units cancel out. In this case, we must flip the molar mass ratio in order to line up the grams of lithium on the bottom with the grams of lithium that we started with. We do the same thing with the moles of lithium and the atoms of lithium. We cross out our units, then we multiply, cross, and divide. Our final answer is 1.04 times 10 to the 24th atoms in every 12 grams of lithium. Stoichiometry is the heart of chemistry. In a chemistry laboratory, different formulas or reactions require certain measurements or dilutions that aren't always obvious. Stoichiometry is a skill that is practiced and used in every single chemistry reaction in every three chemistry lab. It is an important skill to learn to become proficient in chemistry. In this video, we learned that stoichiometry allows chemists to convert between units and determine accurate measurements. We also learned that a mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles, but it also allows us to do fluid conversions between units and measurements, such as atoms, molecules, ions, or grams. Additionally, we learned that the molar mass is available on the periodic table, and it is grams per mole, and it allows us to convert between grams and moles fluidly for every element. Finally, we learned that we must cross off units to achieve our desired unit result. And that's it for today. Have a nice day, and remember to talk chemistry.